In Focus, your local election headquarters. And we are counting down to the first televised debate between the top four candidates in the GOP primary for governor. And it's going to happen right here in our studios. The candidates will be right here at these four podiums. And we'll be right here bringing your questions to the candidates as your moderators. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Dan Spieler. And I'm Beer Shell Edmay. Now, this race for governor has certainly been one to watch with six Republicans and one Democrat seeking to replace Governor Eric Holcomb, who's nearing the end of his second term. And our debate right here will be the first chance to see these candidates, the top candidates, square off on live TV for a one hour debate. Again, four candidates qualified for our debate based on the results of our recent poll with Emerson College and The Hill. Candidates needed to get 5% in that poll to qualify. So let's start now with our State House reporter, Hannah Adamson, who takes a closer look at the results of that poll and what it all means in this race for governor. 1,000 Hoosiers participated in the poll we commissioned from Emerson College. The poll asking Hoosiers 13 questions about Indiana's presidential and gubernatorial primaries. 33% of likely Republican primary voters say they'll vote for Mike Braun. Leagues ahead of his nearest competition, Lieutenant Governor Suzanne Crouch at 7.2% and former IEDC President Eric Doden at 6.6%. It's frankly going to be tough for any of these other candidates to overcome that hurdle. However, the poll also showed 43% of Republican voters say they're undecided when it comes to who should be the next governor. We found that women are more undecided than men, and we found that undecided voters skew a little bit younger. The poll also shows the top two concerns among Hoosier voters are the economy and crime. According to the poll, roughly 55% of Republican voters say Mike Braun is the best gubernatorial pick to tackle those issues. What I would have liked to have heard them speak more about would have been crime. Crime is huge, especially in Indianapolis. I mean, I wish they would have talked about that. I uh, also inflation. I mean, that's another big issue. I mean, our grocery prices. I wish they would have talked about that. We need kids educated. They need to be in safe environments. They need to come up to be future generations and workers. And we need that in all the areas of the state. All right, Hannah Adamson there with some Indiana voters and with the polling director at Emerson College. Again, Senator Braun leading that poll by double digits with more than 40% undecided. And Dan, you have been speaking with all four of these candidates here in recent weeks ahead of our live debate. Yeah, that's right. They're all looking at that key number, 43% undecided and hoping that that's the key to this race. The only problem is if any of these candidates besides Mike Braun has a chance, they have to get almost all of that right. undecided vote to win. So obviously our debate right here is going to be so important for primary voters to get a sense of who they support. And the candidates tell me as they come here to our studios, they are ready to make their case to voters. What are you hoping to accomplish on the debate stage to try and draw a contrast here for voters? Well, you know, I'm running for governor because I care deeply about Indiana and about Hoosiers. And I want to boldly lead Indiana into the future and protect our conservative values. And I have the passion, commitment, courage, and experience to deliver results for Hoosiers. What is going to be the biggest issue in this primary? Well, for me, it's about eliminating the state income tax. I'm the only candidate that is proposing eliminating taxes. And I want to be perfectly clear, Dan, I'm talking about a tax cut, not a tax replacement. And as former vice chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, as former auditor of state, I'm telling you we can do it and we have a plan Some to Some of your do opponents that. have questioned if it's really feasible. Well, when they say when they when they say it's a gimmick, what they're really saying is government needs more of your money and you need less. And I'm saying there's a way that we can do it. That poll had you ahead comfortably, but it also had 43% still undecided. It's a pretty big number. Are you concerned about the other candidates in this race really taking it to you now that they've seen these numbers, whether it's on issues like qualified immunity or your past primary voting record? It seems as if they're ready to draw these contrasts wherever they can, the debate stage. Well, number elsewhere. one on all those issues, you got to remember, that's been litigated over the length of my Senate term. So uh, most of that has already been discounted in the marketplace. Uh, but when you look at, that's the same numbers that have been in place for over a year. It's a little different on the undecideds, uh, but it pushes all the opponents into single digits. Our internals have had that same proportionality with probably 
30 to 33 on the undecided. So it's the same kind of uh, direction. And it says that I think we've been running a campaign uh, based on a good record in your current job. Uh, remember, I visit all 92 counties every year. I've got to be the easiest governor or senator in the country to get a hold of. I give open office hours on Fridays in Jasper. So I think all of that has come together to where in this last two months, there will be a lot of stuff fleshed out. we got four debates. You're doing one of them That's here. Right. And I think you'll see all of that uncertainty get clarified on issues. So we've got a poll out, obviously, that has you nearly tied for second place with Lieutenant Governor Crouch. You're right at 6.6%. .6%. Candidates had to be above 5% to officially qualify for our debate later this month. So you'll be there on the debate stage with three other candidates. But our poll also shows still a large number, more than 40% of voters undecided in this race. You and some of the others need to win most of those undecideds to, to win this race. Is that still possible? What do you need to do on the debate stage to make that happen? Oh yeah, Dan, what we've seen is that every poll that comes out, our support grows. Uh, and then as people engage with our ideas, that margin shrinks even further. Uh, and it gets a t becomes a tighter race. And there's going to be a lot that happens um, over the, the next six to eight weeks, so stay tuned. And we're excited about you know, the trajectory of our campaign. How do you try to draw those contrasts on the debate stage to close that gap with Senator Braun? Well, there's going to be some you know, clear contrast. This race is full of career politicians. And so you know, we knew, uh, our, our campaign team knew, that I'd have to make up ground, introduce myself to the voters. I've done over 325 events statewide. We've been on television introducing ourselves to the voters, uh, and, that, and that's working. But as you, as you suggested, looking at that poll, over 40% of the voters are undecided. You have Mike Braun, who's been in politics forever. He, he, is, uh, he does have name recognition, but his poll numbers are down from where they were a year ago, so he's, he's dropping. And statistically, the rest of the, the three of us, right, uh, are statistically tied if you look at the margin of error. So you've got Mike Braun, who's coming down a little bit. You've got the rest of us statistically tied. And then you have over 40% of the electorate jump ball. Meantime, Republican candidate Brad Chambers, who you saw there in our recent interview, held an event last week to outline some of his economic priorities. They include infrastructure, lowering taxes, and supporting small businesses. Chambers says his experience as Indiana's former Secretary of Commerce can help address the state's top fiscal issues. I'm confident um, that we can, we can shrink government and make it more efficient and, and more importantly make it work for the customers, make it work for the voters and the taxpayers. Chambers also announced he'd create a new cabinet position focusing on the state's water resources. Water, of course, a big topic in this race and with Chambers because of the LEAP district. All right, so Chambers among the four candidates who qualified for our debate. There are a total of six in the race. They all appeared at a forum last week with the National Federation of Independent Business, along with the Libertarian candidate Donald Rainwater and the Democratic candidate Jennifer McCormick. Now, we'll be talking with McCormick next week on In Focus, along with Republicans Curtis Hill and Jamie Rittenauer. As we look here at the entire Republican field, again, Rittenauer and Hill did not qualify for our debate because of their polling numbers. Candidates had to be at 5% to qualify. Up next on this special edition of In Focus, more interviews with the candidates. Plus, we'll talk with our panel about the Republicans taking the stage here in our live one-hour debate. What are they watching for? We'll break it all down with our panel. And we'll talk with one of the candidates running against Congresswoman Victoria Sparks this year, State Rep Chuck Goodrich, next.